Yo, I heard that most of you guys think that if you claim to be a Muslim, then anytime people talk about the thing called law of attraction, automatically you're just like, that's just a bunch of BS. And you know what, bro? Like, I don't blame you to be honest. Because as soon as you go online, all you'll see is just a bunch of people that claim that, oh, you just have to like, say the words, be like, I'm rich, I'm rich. And then automatically a lamp was just gonna come and show up in your house. Listen, that's not how it works. You don't just sit in a room and just be like, I'm black, I'm black. And then automatically like you get the n-word passed. That's not how it works. So in this video, I'm gonna give you practical steps to basically getting whatever you want. And listen, I'm giving this to you from a Muslim perspective. So you won't hear things that don't even make sense. Everything I'll give you is practical. So as soon as you finish the video, go ahead and try it. And just trust me bro, for a whole month, just try it and you'll see results. So I'll be showing you a five step process, but I don't really have an acronym for it. You don't need acronyms. You're not a baby, no acronyms in this video. But the very first step is this right here, which is to activate your taqwa. Now listen, taqwa is basically living in God consciousness mode. So if you go online right now and then you just search up the word taqwa and you just see how people translated this word, I don't know why, I just feel like it's a bit misleading because listen, Taqwa is basically living like there's an eye of the creator on you 24-7. Which means not a single breath passes by without you being in the state. Like as you're breathing right now, you're basically aware that there's someone, like there's an eye that's watching you every single moment. So you live knowing that Allah is watching you, which means that anything that takes you away from the state is not good. Which means that if you open your laptop right now and you're just looking at a bunch of haram things, that means that this exact thing that you're doing is taking you away from the state, so you shouldn't be doing this. Or if you're just sitting down and you're like backbiting with your friends and it's taking you away from the state of taqwa, then you shouldn't be doing this. Or for example, like you just start sitting down and you start smoking like weed and stuff, it's taking you away from the state, which means you shouldn't be doing this thing. But then, when you start living from the state, automatically it's like anything that's anything that's negative is not going to be affecting you negatively. Like, look bro, like you'll, you'll start having even like big problems in your life, but you'll just go through the problems because you're just like, Allah's always watching me, so all is well. So the other day actually, I was in I was in Medina, right? In Saudi, Saudi Arabia. I went to the, to the taxi and then something happened where the taxi guy, he started getting mad at me when he was supposed to be getting mad at the other guy. It's a long story. It wasn't really my fault, but he got mad at me. So the entire time throughout the ride, this taxi guy would just like be cussing, he'd be complaining, he'd be talking non-stop to the point that he even said something that actually offended me. But immediately I'm just like, wait a minute, like just go back to the state of taqwa. And then immediately once I went back to the state of taqwa, knowing that Allah is always watching me and Allah is watching me in this exact moment right now, automatically it's like nothing was really affecting me. It's almost like there was like a shield, in, like an invisible shield around me that any word that would come, it wouldn't hurt. Or even anything that would happen to me, it wouldn't hurt. So at some point, like, as I was in the car with this taxi guy, even he started calming down. So at some point he would be like, he was he would start talking to me about like his dead parents and all that stuff. And the entire time I'm just like, wow, bro, like if I actually responded to this guy, the like it would have literally led to a fight. But somehow I remained calm. I didn't really say anything. And all of a sudden, everything was fine. So this is the very first step. Because listen, even beyond the law of attraction, this step is extremely powerful. That's why it's the first. You'll also notice that when you do this first step, you'll have no attachment to the world. You'll feel extremely relaxed and you'll live your whole life with 0% judgment. You'll literally live like a... You know, it's like when you, when you say a baby and then a baby is like anything that someone says to it, anything that someone does to it, like he or she, it doesn't feel anything. Like it doesn't really mind. Like if you hurt it, obviously it's going to be crying. But anything that happens, the baby is not affected. And that's how you'll be living. It's almost like you go back to your true self. It's like the other day I was, I held my nephew when he was younger actually, and then I dropped him. But he, he, like, he didn't hate me. He still wanted me to hold him after that too. I'm just like, that's actually crazy. Like this, this little kid did not really have any resentment towards me. He still wanted, he, he still wants to be in my arms, which is actually crazy. So you don't hold on to emotions. You just flow with the world. And it might be complicated to do, like if I give you all these promises when you live in the state of taqwa and all that stuff, you might think this is so complicated. But bro, all you have to do is realize there's an eye that's always watching you. And this is the eye of your creator. It never leaves. So you could wake up and go to sleep and this eye is still there. You could be born, which you are. You, you'll reach 80, bro. And this is the same eye. The same eye is still there. Bro, you can die and be in a coma. And this eye is still there. So listen, you can end this whole video right now. And just this tip alone is going to transform your whole life. Forget the law of attraction. Just this tip alone 
is gonna transform your whole life. And trust me, like, bro, I believe in this so much. Like, I'm I'm talking about how like you can literally end suffering with this. If you have cancer and then you're living from a state of taqwa, you'll live like you're so content, like you're so happy, like nothing is affecting you negatively. So again, step number one is just realize there's an eye that's always watching over you and your awareness on this eye, just being aware that this eye is here is the whole process. Like this is the whole work. Just being aware that there's an eye that's watching you, that's it. And listen, this is this is experiential. Like this is not something that you'll read from a book and automatically you're just like, yeah, I understand it. No, no, no. Habibi, this is an experience that you have to go through, which you can literally do it right this moment right now. So you can pause the video and then have this awakening right now be aware that Allah is always watching you right now. And then you can proceed to step number two. <laughs> so step number two. So now from this state of taqwa, ask yourself, what do I really, really want? Like, what is it that I actually want? And you don't have to answer this immediately. Like, you just ask yourself, ask the question, and just let it go. Because the whole point is that you're supposed to be getting the answer effortlessly. Because listen, most of you guys are like setting goals and stuff. You would be setting a goal and you would, you would just be like, I want to make $10,000 per month. Ask yourself, like, where did that goal even come from? You know where that goal came from? You would go online, you would see a bunch of people, even me to be honest, who claim that you can make $10,000 per month. So automatically for you, you're just like, that's my goal. It seems like that's what people care about, so that's my goal. But bro, you got this goal from somewhere else, from something outside of you. So this is just programming. That's The real you doesn't really want this goal. This is just the fake you writing down some stuff just to feel like you're, you're doing something. So this is not even your true goal, Habibi. Also, like, who told you that your life is only limited to $10,000 per month? Like, why are you putting brakes on yourself, bro? Your heart, your heart, if you actually love it, it lives with 0% luck. You realize that you, the brain, the brain is so careful. The brain walks around and is just like, careful, bro, don't do this, don't do that. You might get hurt, you might do this. But when you live from the heart, the heart doesn't care. The heart will find something that it loves and it'll go like, it'll immediately dive into that thing without even thinking it's like, is this going to hurt me? Is this going to do this? What if I fail? What if I do this? There is not a single excuse in, in, in the heart. But in the mind, that's where you find everything. So I'm telling you, it's like when you're step number two, forget the mind and set a goal from the heart. Also, it's like the heart or the soul. They're both synonymous. It knows the creator. So it knows the creator is abundant. And the creator gives in abundance. But your mind is just too polluted, bro. It's too programmed. So it starts setting these like limiting goals. So ask yourself, what do I really want? And then just wait till your own heart answers the question. Don't force it. Just ask and let go. And I'm telling you, it's like your mind is always like, what if I feel? What about like I don't do get it in the, the like the time limit that I have? What if like how do I even know how it's gonna happen? Like what's the how? That's how the mind thinks because it's just been programmed. But then if you look at the heart, the heart is not a peasant. The mind is a peasant. The way the heart thinks is that everything's unlimited. Everything's abundant. Everything's beautiful. And if you don't believe me, I told you the heart, the soul comes from directly from Allah. So when you look in nature, nature, it's abundant. It's unlimited. It's beautiful. It's effortless. It does everything with the least amount of energy like used. And when you look at nature, you're basically looking at the reality that's raw. So this is a raw reality. And your heart is not like polluted like the mind. So the heart is still raw, which means that once you get past the programming, then you start living this raw reality just like nature. And I just told you, a raw reality is that of abundance, of like effortlessness, of knowing that all is well, of knowing that everything's unlimited. So anyway, once your heart gives you a goal, your goal might actually just be like $100 million per year. You never know because like, again, ask and then your heart is going to give you the answer effortlessly. So if your heart is giving you an answer like, a hundred million dollars a year if that's the goal then dang bro just go with it this is the goal that's it don't be like wait a minute but that's not realistic that millionaire i saw on tiktok was telling me to like set realistic goals and blah 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 forget that guy i'm telling you live from the heart not the mind so forget the mind and write that goal down a hundred million dollars per year and the reason why i'm saying that is because if you see step number three is whatever the goal is if you ever take this goal and then you put it on like a pedestal just pretend like automatically the goal is impossible. You'll never be able to achieve it. What's so sad is that one human would think that $100 million per year is too little. Another human would think that 10 k is too much. So it's all relative, which means that if you're thinking from the mind, it's all false. This is false and this is false. Again, think from the heart. Both are easy. Both 
are effortless. So take that goal and remove it from this pedestal that you added because of your mind. Also listen, the more you want something, the less likely you'll get it. And the more you desire something, the less likely you'll get it. And this is a universal law. Because look, whenever you put your attention on something that's like other than Allah, and you think that that thing is so amazing, it's so big, it's so magnificent and stuff, then what's gonna happen is that Allah will never allow you to have that goal because now Allah's trying to prove to you that Allahu Akbar, Allah is greatest. Allah is literally like the greatest being there is. There is nothing greater. It's like, bro, like how can something be greater than your creator? So this law, it works on Muslims and non-Muslims. And what's so sad is that, bro, you'll see Muslims, like non-Muslims actually nowadays, who think that a hundred million is nothing. And then as a result, they would go and achieve it. But then you will see Muslims themselves, bro. The ones who every single salah, they say Allahu Akbar. You will see the same Muslims, they would think that 100 million is way too much, it's too great, I can't achieve it. What are you guys doing? We're the ones that are supposed to be like the holders of this beautiful message, and then you're thinking it's like, a number is too great that I can't achieve it. Habib, like, did you forget? We always say Allahu Akbar, Allah is greater, whatever thing we have in our mind, whatever goal we set, whatever thing we see, Allah is greater. So in reality, Allah himself, he tells you, the creator is greater than anything, the creator is the greatest, and Allah gives in abundance. Allah gives in abundance. So this is the first thing, like if you set a goal that's like 100 million, take that goal and take it off the pedestal. One thing that helps is that Allah has promised the good people and the ones that believe in Allah that they're going to be living in heaven in the afterlife, right? A Prophet ﷺ himself, he said that if you work towards the afterlife, then this life that you're living in right now is going to come crawling to you. Do you know what that means? Combine these two things together, and just look at this sketch, this beautiful sketch I'm about to show you. So look, this right here is the dots, right? So this is the goal that you're setting. This is a hundred million. Allah's promising the afterlife. Muhammad Sallallahu is promising that if you work towards the afterlife, this life will come crawling to you. That means that this giant circle right here, just pretend like, pretend like this circle is giant. This giant circle is the afterlife. And this dot right here is this life. That means if you're setting a hundred million dollar goal, this is way too little compared to what Allah has in store for you. Which means that now, when you work towards the afterlife, you're working towards something that's so great to the point that anything within this life is little. It's, bro, it's this big. It's nothing. So 100 million for you as a Muslim is supposed to be nothing. And I told you, the more you desire something, the more you want something, you think that that thing is big. And the more you do that, the less likely you'll get it because now you're putting your attention on this small dot right here. Now, if you put your attention on this, on the truth, this big circle right here, this little thing, it's so easy to achieve, bro. It's so easy. How can it not be easy? And again, I'm telling you, it's like the creator himself. If you're a Muslim, you believe this. The creator himself is promising you this, promising you that there is something big that's like waiting for you in the afterlife. So then why are you now putting your attention on this small thing right here? It makes no sense. Now what this also means, this whole analogy, is that if you're struggling for this right here, then you're living life backwards, bro. You're supposed to be struggling for this. This is supposed to be the easy part. You're not supposed to be struggling for this. Now you might be asking me, it's like, well, bro, how am I not supposed to be struggling when I'm trying to like get more wealth? Again, put your attention here. Don't be putting your attention on this small little dot, a hundred million. Put your attention here and then go and still do the actions that require you to actually achieve this result that you want. Now, once you actually internalize this, because this, this is step number three, you wrote down the goal, but now you're supposed to internalize this. Don't put the goal on the pedestal. Know that your goal is nothing. To Allah, it's nothing. The truth is that it's nothing. And then once you do that, do step number four, which is to live like the goal is already done. Remember, bro, who the heck are you asking? Who's the one that's running your whole life? Who's the one that's running the entire earth? Allah's running the entire earth, man. The creator, which means that 100 million, 1 dollar, 100 trillion, all these numbers are nothing to Allah. You're limiting yourself, but why are you, like, why are you limiting Allah? Allah can do anything. Like, you might not be able to do anything physically, but Allah can. So if you ask something, anything from Allah, just know that the goal is done. Just consider the dua done. Consider your request over, like it's done. You achieved the thing already. And there's actually a hadith Qudsi that says that Muhammad said that Allah said, I am as my servant thinks of me. This is a hadith Qudsi, which means that it's 
a word from the tongue of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam coming from Allah. Which basically means that Allah gives in abundance, bro. So if you think Allah gives you wealth easily, then Allah is going to give you wealth in abundance easily. Now if you think that Allah is always going to put you in lack, then Allah will put you in lack in abundance easily. This is the law, bro. Habibi, this is the law. The law of abundance. So again, it's like if you're thinking that, man, I'm always sick. I'm always getting into like having a fever, I'm getting issues. My kids don't like me. My wife doesn't like me, blah, blah, blah. If you always think this way, and you think that Allah is doing that to you, you'll get an abundance of that. And now if you're always thinking, it's like, Allah always provides for me. I'm always being taken care of by Allah, which is the truth, by the way. Allah gives me whatever I ask for, whatever I want, then Allah is going to give you that in abundance. Allah says in the Quran that I've given you everything you've asked for. Now, you don't ask by saying, may I please? You ask with your thoughts. If you're saying something like, I'm always like this, I'm always like, like I'm always sad, I'm always depressed. You'll get more of that in abundance too. But if you're always thinking, it's like, bro, it's so easy. Like, how is life so easy? It's literally just like a like a stroll. It's like a fun thing that I'm doing and that's it. Like, life is so simple, bro. If you're always thinking that way, then that's what you'll get in abundance. Now, listen, you don't really have to even struggle for the goals. So if you believe that you don't have to struggle for the goals, you'll have that in abundance. Again, I wrote right here. I'm like, you guys think the whole law of attraction thing is something outside of Islam and all that stuff because you never do the research, bro. You never sit down and think about the ayat or the hadith and all that stuff. Humans themselves, bro, they think in so, like, it's so much lack. What's wrong with you guys? Like, you're always thinking in lack. Have you actually not went outside and just seen how, like, abundant nature is? How beautiful nature is? Even the desert is, is abundant. Like, you look at the desert and you're like, bro, how, ma how many grains of sand is in this one desert? It's unlimited. You look at your whole body. How many hairs do I have right here, bro? Abundance. So this is actually the way that I live. I'm like, if you think everything in life is easy, then Allah will make everything easy in abundance. Bro, I truly believe I'm like, everything in life is easy. As a result... Everything will be easy. Now, it's funny because when I actually do think I'm like, because I was actually getting into crypto, the, the whole meme coin thing, I was like, this is so hard. This is so, I'm going to lose so much money. And as a result, that's what happens. <laughs> now, listen, the last step is to surrender. Don't resist, man. When you do the whole previous steps that I just showed you right now, you'll notice that if you live every single moment based on the previous steps that I showed you, you'll notice that there's going to be things that are happening in your life. And those exact things are the things that are going to move you towards your goal. Now listen, you might have done all these steps that I just told you about right now. And then what's going to happen is that somehow you'll just get fired from your job. If such a thing happens, again, surrender, don't resist. Just realize that whatever Allah is putting your way, it's moving you towards your goal. Now if you actually got fired after doing all these steps, and then as soon as you got fired, you're just like, Man, Allah hates me. Allah doesn't like me. Allah is like trying to make my life poor and all that stuff. If you do, if you start thinking such a way, then you didn't do all these steps. You're back into like square one, for example. Basically what happened when you do that is that it's almost like you've fallen off from like the grace because now what's going to happen is that Allah, again, I am as my servant thinks I am. So what you'll get is that more of this thing that you're thinking is like, oh, suffering. Allah doesn't like me. You'll get more things that tell you that Allah does not like you in abundance too. But if you surrender, if you don't resist, so you lost your job, but then you're not resisting. You're just thinking that, well, this is Allah moving me towards my goal. This is the best thing that could have happened to me because Allah's moving me towards my goal. When you start thinking this way, then you're still on track. By the way, if you do fall off grace, it's fine. It's not like a, it's not a, it's not a huge deal. Once again, all you have to do is just restart. Go back to taqwa. Even do istighfar. Say astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Go back, bro. Do the steps once again. And then you'll see it's almost like you're, you're literally back on track. And then eventually what's going to happen is that something magnificent is going to happen in your life to the point that you'll be so shocked. Like, bro, randomly you'll just stumble on like something that you, you do. And it just so happens that that thing that you did was like the perfect thing to do at the time. Like when I set a goal to start making money online, it's so crazy because... Things just started coming to me, like books started coming to me. I wanted to get more knowledge on certain topics. Literally, like the knowledge start, started coming to me. I remember, bro, like what did Allah say? Allah says, whoever fears Allah, like whoever has taqwa of Allah. See, I like the word, I don't like when they say whoever fears Allah, because Allah is saying whoever has taqwa of Allah, he will make for him a way out and will provide to him from what he does not expect. So you'll have something coming to you from a place that you don't even expect it, bro. And don't even try to like think, oh, is it going to come from here? Is it going to come from here? Forget about all of that. Just live in the present. 
And then whatever happens, don't resist it. Just surrender to the moment. And just keep doing the things. Because remember, whoever relies upon Allah, he will find Allah sufficient for him. So keep doing things, knowing that Allah is literally, Allah is with you right now. Like Allah is watching you right now. So just keep doing everything. So let go of control. Be in a state of Islam. Like surrender. And just take any action that comes your way. Don't even overthink it. Also think of it like when you're about to go fall asleep. Now when you fall asleep, have you noticed that the more you try to fall asleep, the harder it is for you to sleep. And then the more you let go, like you surrender, you'll notice that when you're lying down, eventually you'll just fall asleep. So this right here in life is the same exact thing. Just don't be forcing anything. Just relax, bro. Relax. Just basically like, like do the action. So when you go to sleep right now, what are you doing? Like you put your bed, like you put your back on the bed and then you close your eyes. So you're doing the action and then you set the intention that right now I'm going to go to sleep. So you set the intention, you did the act. That's exactly what you do in real life too. So you set the intention that your goal is the intention and then you're doing the action, which is just go on the laptop, bro. Like click some button and stuff. So you have the intention, you have the action. And then whatever comes your way, accepts it. You'll notice that the goal is going to actually come to you effortlessly. And don't be forcing anything. Just know that the goal is done. Like know it. Live from the state that you know it's done. Again, who are you asking? You're asking Allah. That means everything is done. That's it. Just do the action and that's it. And Habibi, do this for a whole month. And then just watch the magic that's going to happen to you in your life, man. And there's actually a beautiful quote right here by Rumi that says that as you start to walk on the way, the way appears... That's all it is, bro. And then with the way, when the way appears, just keep walking on it. Again, like it's, it's going to be effortless. Although the road is never ending, take a step and keep walking. Do not look fearfully into the distance. On this path, let the heart, once again, be your guide. For the body is hesitant and full of fear. Start living from the heart, Habibi. The mind is just too fearful. And there's actually this beautiful, I think this is a poem by Shams Tabrizi, that says that the chemistry of mind is different from the chemistry of love, which is the heart. The mind is careful, suspicious. He advances little by little. He advises, be careful, protect yourself. Whereas love, or the heart, says, let yourself go. The mind is strong, it's like it never falls down, while the heart, it hurts itself. It falls into ruins, but isn't it in ruins that we mostly find the treasures? A broken heart hides so many treasures. This is beautiful, bro. Like This is the stuff that we're... This, guy's, this guy was a Muslim. Who is talking about this guy ever from, from the world that we have right now, like from the Muslims that we have? Who is ever talking about Shams Tabrizi? These, bro, these people. And then he says, how we see God is a direct reflection of how we see ourselves. If God brings to the mind mostly fear and blame, it means that there is too much fear and blame world inside us. If we see God is full of love and compassion, so are we. This is the entire hadith. I am as my servant thinks I am. And then this one right here. The path to the truth is a labor of the heart, not of the head. Make your heart your primary guide, not your mind. Meet, challenge, and ultimately prevail over your nafs with your heart. Knowing your false ego will lead you to the knowledge of Allah. It's crazy, man. The whole path just goes back to Allah. So again, just do this for a month and then just watch the magic that's going to happen to you. Finish this video off right now. Implement this stuff and then come back to this video. Literally, like, go right down in the comments and just tell me, like, what happened after you've done these five steps? I'd love to actually see it. So if this video was helpful, just let me know, Habibi.